Sir, follow the instruction of the deputy. Or you can do it, 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 it
set it over as well to handle it and get it to the homeless person. So you can report online and keep it anonymous, or you can send an envelope in, yep. and anonymous meaning nobody will know who sent the Correct. allegation in. Correct. What about ombudsman? Are you familiar with that process? Yes. Tell, me, tell, tell the jury about that. Uh, so we have an ombudsman uh, person in place who will deal with cases that are um, against our policy that we have, are being raised, concerns are being raised by employees or managers. Uh, they are obligated to do so. Um, the ombudsman person would then um, put a team together and uh, start the investigation uh, by uh, putting the data together through interviews or by document reviews. Um, and then uh, come to a conclusion and take corrective action from there. Okay. Are all of your employees at GE made aware of this policy when they are hired? Yes, they are. Uh, on day one, uh, there's an a, a introduction uh, day. Uh, people learn about it then. And what happens as well is uh, people get it in a uh, usual format. They have to do that. We have to go through the training and acknowledge the for the training. Do you know if um, Andrew Schneiderman would have been made aware of this policy? She was made aware and she, uh, she took the course as well. And she took the course? Yes. Okay, tell me about the course. So she took the course on April 14th, so the same week as she started, um, and she acknowledged that she did it. Uh, the course is about complete integrity policy. Uh, it's broken up in multiple sections. And most sections of our reporting practices, which covers workplace harassment. During the time that Mrs. Snyderman was employed at, at GE, did she ever report any incidents of sexual harassment? Uh, she's not, I'm not aware of her reporting any uh, forms of harassment. Thank you, sir. No Mr. Feature, you may cross them if you wish. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Bonetta and John Feature, you and I have spoken, not face to face, but you were kind enough to speak with me a few weeks ago. I've got just a few questions for you, please, sir. You knew both Timmy Newman and Andrew Snyderman through work during 2010. That's correct. You indicated that you are the human resources manager for what part of GE, please, sir? At that point, I was the uh, human resource manager for the for part of the engineering division. And would you have been at that time the human resources manager for both the divisions that um, Mr. Newman was in, as well as Mrs. Snyder? Yes, sir. You were privy to Mrs. Snyder being hired back in the spring of 2010. Correct, I was. Were you involved in the interview process or the approval process in, in her hiring? I was not a interviewer myself. Uh, one of my team members did. Uh, we used the HR on the interview panel. Uh, but she kept me informed of the status of And you said she kept you informed. Your team member kept you informed. Now, physically, where was your office or your space to work in relation to either Mr. Newman's immediate place of work or Mrs. Snyderman's place of work? Uh, Mr. Newman's office was about 50 yards away from the same floor. In the same building? In the same building. Did Mrs. Snyderman work in that same building, sir? No, she did not. Okay. Her manager, her direct supervisor, was Mr. Newman, correct? Right. But he did not work in the same building that she did. That's correct. Did you ever have the opportunity, Mr. Boneda, to witness any of the interactions between Andrew Snyderman and Henny Newman? Um, I've, she, she, both of them were in the project team that we were both part of, so I've seen them right there. That's what you're referring to? Okay, but I'm talking about anything, yeah, any, yeah, any kind of project, job, yeah. anything at all. Yeah, I've seen them together in a, in a conference room or in any room. Did you ever observe anything about the two or between the two that you felt was inappropriate or unusual for the workplace? I did not. Now, can you tell us if you have in your uh, capacity as human resources Manager, did you during the time Mrs. Snyder worked there, were you privy to what type of job she was doing? I, I knew what type of job she was doing. Yes. Okay, what was she doing? She was the uh, key manager, the quality management system leader. Okay. And what were her duties in general? And, and let me back up, let me interrupt you just to say before we answer and recognize that um, if you can tell us in 
layman's non-technical terms that would help. I know it would help me and it might help the jury too. Sure. Uh, so in energy, uh, GE Energy had a quality uh, uh, policy um, and we wanted to make sure that our engineering department was adhering to that policy, so making sure that everything that was written up there um, we complied with. Um, in her case, she was leading uh, the, the activities specific to the software engineering team, and she made sure that we were compliant in that section, in that area. Um, so what she would do is look at the policy, see if the processes that were in place in that software engineering team matched, uh, and if there were any processes, she would document them and make sure that these were implemented. Let me back up just a second then. GE, and I think it's showing my age here, I, I think of GE in terms of refrigerators and light bulbs and, and MRI machines and things like that. <coughs> GE actually has a software development project or team as well? Yes, we do. What, what types of software are we talking about? I mean, don't go to any proprietary secrets, but who are you make it for? Internal or is this something you sell to other folks? This is for external. So we develop programs, for, in this case, for um, our users in the utility space. Now, are you familiar with Mrs. Snyderman's background, her professional background, before she came to work for General Electric? Yes, sir. What was her background? Was it, um, well, you say you're familiar, you can tell, tell me yourself. Yeah, she was in various uh, consulting and project management roles uh, with um, uh, institutions and companies that, uh, like, like Deloitte and Harvard and a smaller software company started from there. And, and her background, am I correct, was not one in engineering? Correct. It was more in software development and things of that nature. Correct. Right. She had a degree in computer information systems. Now, when Mrs. Snyderman was working at GE, uh, you were aware that she took a number of trips, correct? I'm aware of it, yes. Okay. And whether you were aware at the time, yeah, I know from, right. from speaking to you later that you ultimately were aware. Right. Now, you indicated, I believe, that assuming that the economy in general and GE's fortunes are, are doing okay, that someone in her position or Mr. Newman's position would essentially be in a position of self-directing their own travel. Is that correct? That's right. She was brand new with the company, though, at that time, correct? Correct. Do you have any reason to believe that she knew in those first, she was only there, what, six or seven months total, right. that she was in a position to have fully understood what was normal or abnormal in way of travel? Do you have any personal knowledge of that? Uh, I don't have any knowledge how much she knew, no. Okay. And the, uh, there were at least half a dozen trips that she took with Mr. Newman, who was her immediate supervisor, correct? Yeah, I know that as well, yes. Okay. And uh, again, Mr. Newman could self-correct his own travel, assuming the company is doing okay right now. Right. He could determine whether or not it would have been appropriate for Mrs. Snyderman to accompany him during that time as well, correct? Correct. Right. During either the, uh, the semi-annual or the annual review of Mr. Newman's performance and setting goals for 2010, I believe at that time Mr. Newman's uh, supervisor was Mr. Gephardt, is that correct? That's correct. Now, were you privy to the directions that were given to, the recommendations that were given to Mr. Newman for what he should do off campus during 2010? I was, yes. Can you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what those directions were? Objection here, say. Response? Now, your Honor, were these directions that you were privy to and they were actually told to Mr. Newman as part of the performance evaluation? I was privy to those. Yes. It doesn't make them not hearsay, Your Honor. I'm saying, I'm going to say that objection. You have to rephrase that question in the future. Were, were these made part of a written evaluation for Mr. Newman? Uh, yes, they were also And were you present when Mr. Newman was informed of this of this evaluation? I was not. I'm sorry, you said you were not? I was not. All right. Hang on just one second. You're
Ms. Pitcher, you may continue. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, who's uh, this is your witness? Huh? <coughs> yes, sir. You may approach. What exhibit number is this, sir? D1, Your Honor. D1, thank you. Mr. Bonetta, let me show you this document, which is a sheet of paper. Don't read it out loud. Just look at it and tell us if you can identify it, sir. I can do that first. Yes. Okay, what do you identify it as? We, we call it as the EMS, which is the uh, uh, employee management system, uh, where we document kind of the uh, achievements and the development plans for a company. And is this document generated in the normal course of business at General Electric? Yes, it is. Is it a record that is kept in the normal course of business there? Yes, it is. Is it generated um, approximately at the same time that the events are recorded there? And by that it means it's not something done years later. Correct, right. yeah, so it's a reflection of the last year and before we move to the next year. Okay, and is this something that you yourself are privy to, whether or not you were actually the one who gave the announcement there? Is that something that in your capacity as human resources, uh, manager that you are in fact familiar with. Oh, yeah. And can you tell us, does this particular document refer to a particular employee? Yes, it does. And to whom does it, it, it apply, sir? It applies to Mr. Norman. Mr. Newman? Mm -hmm. And does it tell you on this document what advice or recommendations were made for his advancement in 2010, sir? So can you repeat that? Yes, does this document indicate to you what advice was or recommendations to Mr. Newman uh, was made for his advancement in 2010. Yes, it does. Your Honor, this time I'd move to introduce State of Defense Exhibit Number One. In objection. No, sir. All right, D1 is a member without objection. You may publish it to the jury if you wish. Thank you. You're welcome. Your Honor, while that is warming up with the court commission, I have some other questions that I can ask you, Mr. Oh, you may? Oh, okay. I'll make a record, if you don't mind, you may continue. I know the court likes to, uh, abhors the fact, so I'll be happy to, to proceed here, Your Honor. Thank you. Right. Now, let's talk about late 2010 and the uh, November, October, November, December area. Can you tell the jury whether you are aware of a project that Mr. Newman with Mrs. Snyder and the assistants was working on. I'm aware of it. If you refer to this, I would use for this. That, that's what I'm referring to. Can you, um, and, and you say and that is the IDP program? Right. What a project. What was that, sir? So a order that uh, indicated that uh, we had a non compliance <coughs> where the competencies of our employees were not as well defined uh, for certain roles and certain uh, tasks. Um, and what this audit told us that we need to put a, a, a more rigid process in place, um, not only identifying those competencies, but also making sure that we help employees cover the gap, the competencies required, and the level that they were at that point in time. And was Mr. Newman actively working on that project? Yes, he was. Was Mrs. Snyderman act actively working on that project? Yes, he was. Now, what was the deadline for that project as best you recall? Um, well, there, there were, uh, Mr. Norman had, had an aggressive, more aggressive plan than I had set, because uh, we co-led that program, uh, project. Um, I wanted to get it done by the end of the year. We wanted to do it as soon as possible, because this was a red flag on our uh, audit report. Let me make sure I understand that. Insofar as where you were concerned, 
you would have been happy had, the, had it been completed by the end of calendar 2010, correct? And you indicated Mr. Newman was more aggressive and he wanted the project completed early. Yes. And Mrs. Snyder was working on that project with him at that time, correct? Yes. Picture, you may continue. Got a little back on. Your Honor, this is not Zoom. I'm just going to, with the court commission, I'm just going to hand this to Mr. Barnett and ask him to read that section rather than you may approach. a fuzzy image. Mr. Bonnet, I'm just going to ask you to look at this document that's been admitted, D1. In this section, it says development plan. Would you read out loud for us uh, the first several lines of that, please, sir? The development plan for 2010 for Henry Newman. You want to read both sections, sir? Or? Uh, just the, on the left at first. On the left, sir. The development plan. Um, it states there's at least two customers and 54 ESP sites in 2010. Uh, then mentor slash coach, three individuals in ESE, operations quality that are not in my direct report, Advanced energies experience here development support. So he was advised as part of his goals for 2010 <coughs> to get out of the office. These were his comments, these were his personal suggestions. Get out, meet at least two customers and visit two to four of the GE sites other than yeah. here in Atlanta. That was his personal recommendation. And that was approved uh, by GE. Yeah, it was supported by GE. Oh, yeah. Supported by GE. Okay. Thank you, sir. Now, how long did you know the, uh, Mr. Newman? Um, I started working in Atlanta since March 2009, except I'm Okay, so you worked with him up until the death of Rusty Snyder, and you worked with him for about a year and a half. Right. During the time, Mr. Bonetta, that you knew Mr. Newman, did you ever see anything about his personality that broadcast to you anything of a dangerous personality, anything of an aggressive, assaulted type personality? That's all I have. Mr. James, you may redirect. Yes, sir. Attorney <coughs> Council asked you about observing anything inappropriate um, between the defendant and Jimmy Newman. Did you travel with them? I traveled with Mr. Newman. Yeah. Did you travel with them? Not with them. Not with them. Okay. Um, you, in Greenfield with them? I was not. Did you go to London with them? I did not. Did you read the emails between them? I did not. Did you go to dinner with them in Greenfield? I did not. How about the club? I did not. Council also asked about 
Ladies and gentlemen, a recording has been admitted in evidence, and there is also a transcript of that recording. It is the recording and not the transcript which constitutes evidence in this trial. You, the jury, must determine for yourselves what was said on the recording. Any discrepancies between the recording and the transcript are to be resolved in favor of the recording. That is what you're hearing and seeing, okay? You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Say it one one. You may, yes, well, you may move and get in position wherever you deem you need to be so you can see whatever you need to see and observe whatever you need to observe. You may cue and play clip one yard. Thank you, Mr. Snyder. 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 Thank you
Come on, you'll be snoring about that before.
quality management systems that GE puts in place to uh, help with their product creation. And were you, were you then a manager of some I was. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the defendant was your boss? Yes. What was his title, do you know? Director of Operations. And is that a pretty lofty title? <sighs> I, I don't know. I, ha I mean, it, it's a pretty important job. He was uh, also had not just operations, but finance. He somehow had that responsibility also. He oversaw um, a budget for uh, the larger group of engineers, um, not just quality management, but for um, an entire group of systems engineers within GE. So yes, I, I think it was an important title. Did your job involve travel? Yes. How often did you travel? Um, maybe five or six times when I initially was hired at GE, it was agreed that it might be about 20%, sorry, 20% of my job. That was an issue uh, of mine when I took the job. I didn't want to be away from home very often. And so we came to an agreement that it would only be about 20% of my job. It turned out to be um, some more of that. Um, but it was presented to me that it was a requirement that I go visit all of the sites that I manage, and that it was important for me to meet the people in those locations. And for some reason, it was important to do it soon. Who told you it was important? Henny Newman. The defendant. Did you travel with him when you traveled? Uh, sometimes. OK. Did you ever travel for GE without the defendant? Um, I went to Longmont, Colorado um, on my own for training. Uh, that I traveled without him at that time to Longmont. OK. Let me get back to your family. At the time you started GE, Rusty had had many jobs, correct? Correct. Okay. What was the general finances of your family? Um, we're savers. Okay. Um, always have been. And uh, we, um, when everyone else is going out to uh, fancy dinners, we're eating peanut butter and jelly at home. So we save our money. And um, we had a lot of money saved up in the bank. Okay. Over time, I've, I worked many jobs, successful jobs myself. Rusty has made a lot of money over the years. We saved it. Our financial situation was just fine. Okay. But we work and live based on what we earn. That's our style of living. We don't live beyond our means. And so um, in the times that Rusty was uh, unemployed, uh, I was always making consulting income at that time, or he himself was making consulting income at that time. And consulting income, was that, who were you with at the time? Me or Russ? You. Um, I was with Harvard Business School. Um, I had worked for them when we lived in Boston when he was in school, and I worked for them as a full-time employee, but then when we moved to Atlanta, I was um, on a critical project. They didn't want to let me go, so I stayed and became a contractor. And for the remaining eight years, they were my main client. And so I did um, project management consulting for technology projects for them. I had other small clients in there, but they were my main source of income. Now, you said you did well, so I can ask you. On November 18th, 2010, approximately how much money did you and Rusty have in the bank? We probably had about um, $800,000 in the bank plus uh, two homes. Um, Where were the homes located? One was in Dunwoody, Georgia, and we had paid off a good portion of that home, um, probably half of what that home is worth. And, and then we have a home at Lake Oconee um, in Edenton, Georgia. You wouldn't consider yourself broke, would you? No. Okay. When you were traveling, 
would you and the defendant talk outside of business as well? Yes. Okay. Did you talk about your personal lives? There's a lot of traveling and you need a lot of time to talk about who you are and get to know who so yes. Did that communication involve email and phone contact with you and the defendant? I'm sorry, I didn't understand the question. Did communication with the defendant involve email as well as text as well as phone? In general, you're asking? In general. Uh, yes. Okay. We spoke about work things uh, constantly. Um, I was new to the company, knew nothing about working in a corporation, and um, he was my sole source of information in getting acclimated to the company. Prior to November 18, 2010, did the defendant ever relay anything to you about his personal life? Yes. What did he relay? In the course of um, the time that I knew him, he discussed in the beginning how he was very happy with his children, had some financial problems, but happy in his marriage. And then it progressed on into I'm not happy in my marriage and my wife is um, not, that we're not getting along, she's confrontational and those are the natures really of our conversation. That concludes clip one, one, nine. All right. What is the left, uh, clip two timeline? Is there another clip you're going to play? Um, not at the time, Your Honor. We have a witness to be calling. We'd we'll be calling next, and I expect that witness to be probably about an hour. Oh. What I'm going to do, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give you a little bit earlier break since the witness is made. I'm not going to worry about it. It take as long as it needs. Uh, but it's actually a break in which you've been actually doing things for the last almost three hours now. When I send you on this break, now I want you to put your notepads up. This is the end of the moment. I'll put your notepads here in the jury room. Turn them face down. No one's going to look at your notes but you. But do not discuss the case. I'll allow them to discuss the case with you. If you do decide to have lunch at a uh, restaurant here in um, Decatur or anyplace else, you're not sitting near anyone who may be discussing the case. I'll allow anyone who may be discussing the case sitting near you. Uh, like I told you before, and I'll tell you again you know, many, many times, ask them to either, hey, move away from you or you move away from them, but I don't want you to hear anything you should not hear. Do not remain upon the floor when I uh, release you at this point in time. Definitely buckle will return to you your communication devices, so this will be your opportunity to check it, uh, your messages, your text messages. If do not text about the call, do not email about coming about this trial, do not talk to anyone about this trial at this point in time. Do not read or look at any media coverage that may be ongoing about this trial. Do not go up on the internet and do any research about this case whatsoever. Do not blog about this case whatsoever. Uh, you may or may not have noticed uh, media types uh, around the building, but do not give them any interviews. Do not talk to them about the case. Uh, I don't want to see you on TV at this point in time. Do not go to any location that may or may not have been made any reference to. All the evidence must come to you in the form of sworn testimony that's introduced during the course of the trial and on any physical evidence that's introduced during the course of the trial. You're more than welcome to bring something to snack and a drink with you during the afternoon session. Uh, the breaks are going to be just like they were this morning, pretty quick and pretty timely, but they will be in the jury room, so that'll be your opportunity to refresh yourself in addition to this extended break here. Do not consume any alcoholic beverages during the lunch break. I know this sound system is giving some feedback. I'm going to see if I can get someone to check that during this break also, and hopefully that'll be clear for us to try. Um, each time when you return from your break, uh, Deputy Buckles and or his assistant will gather up your smartphones, iPhones, iPads, and things of that nature, because you cannot have any communication devices there in the jury room, but just make sure, if you don't mind, put them in the off position. As I mentioned earlier, the lawyers and the parties who are seated here cannot talk and interact with you, and I don't ever want you to think they're being rude or discourteous or draw any inferences from that one way or the other. Now, I'm going to release you, and we're going to be back in here, and I need each and every one of you to give yourself enough time that you do leave the uh, parking garage, you leave the parking garage, you turn, you still have to come back to the metal detector, but I just give you all that just to factor in so you can have time. So you can do whatever you need to do, but I need you physically back in the jury room so we can resume no later than 1.30. And you can be early, but you can be late. We're going to accommodate you being early. But I know several, somebody, you know, had a challenge being here at 9 o'clock, but 1.30 is the real time. Uh, and I just say that over and over because I really need all of you to be here and assemble at that point in time so that we can continue and proceed. And we were in at a reasonable time today. I told you what, and decided what time that's going to be, but it's going to be reasonable. 
Um, and I'll leave, and I'll leave it at that. At this point in time, I'm going to turn you over to Deputy Buckle, call his instructions. We're in recess to 1.30. All rise. Right. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jeff Hellinger, along with attorney Paige Pate, as we continue our 11 Alive coverage of the trial of Andrea Snyderman. It began around 9 a.m. this morning, and here we are at the three-hour mark. We've had a couple of breaks in there in first of about 10 or 15 minutes, and now it's a 90-minute lunch break. And we have been 